How's it going? So I've been working for effectively like a cure for the e-drug, which is, I call it, well, League of Legends, I call it an e-drug, right? So, I'm on holidays, so I had time to, to do this, right? I didn't spend too much time on it, but long story short, I think I was able to do it, right? So, I, I wanted to get you to the point where you can say, all right, I feel satisfied with League of Legends. I do not want to play it anymore. And that's it. Because what engagement optimized matchmaking does to you is that it creates sessions so that the more you play, the more you want it. So I was trying to kind of reverse the process. Um, I, I was kind of utilizing Maslow's hierarchy of needs where I was trying to create a drug where the need of, like, I, I, I kind of, like, this constructed it in such a way where psychologically, inside your head, there is some kind of a need that says, I need League of Legends, and I want to be satisfied that, that like, like, think about it as hunger, right? You need food, and at some point, when you ate enough, you no longer want the food you want something else so i was trying to figure out okay so how do you so first we classify league of legends as a need and how do we satisfy this need so that at some point you say okay i had enough of league of legends i want to do something else now right so that's this this kind of part two part videos that aim to pretty much do that right okay so long story short it's a first thing is you need to understand like this fundamentally you need to understand that league of legends fundamentally is a card game so 99.98 of the time well 99.98 this 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 what i'm going to show you works all the way up until lower grandmaster and if you look at grandmaster tier one sec yeah, so you can go to OPGG, click on um, stats. Uh, it, it, in here you have champion stats, here you have game statistics. So you can see that Grandmaster is 0 0.002. So it's a card game all the way up until then. So the skill doesn't matter. It's more to do with the champions that you pick. So champions are the cards. And what cards you pick determine the outcome of the game more than you trying to CS correctly, you trying to engage correctly, you trying to back correctly, you trying to time your pushes. All of that does not matter. 99.98% of the time it doesn't matter. Like get, even getting coaching session is not going to make a difference because if coaches were honest with you, they would say, okay, what champion are you playing? You're gonna say, oh, I'm playing Soraka. Okay, do not play Soraka, play Nautilus. Play Alistair, all right? That's it, session over. Now I have increased your win rate by significant amount. Number two, you have to dodge. It, like if coaches were correct, they would say, you have to dodge shit lobbies, right? Otherwise you're gonna lose, okay? So how do we prove this theory, right? So we need to somehow prove this theory to be correct. So what I did was, so that's my proposition. My proposition is very simple. For this, if my proposition is correct, that it's simply a card game, I should be able to look at different lobbies and be able to, with certain degree of confidence, predict the outcome of the game, right? So what did I do? I created a champ, like I listed every single champion in the game and I gave them OP AF score, right? So we have four tiers. We have godlike, good, okay, poop, right? So all you're doing is... So if my theory is correct, right? If we line up the champions by score and give them a rating, they uh, lobby the team with the highest score is going to win the game almost all the time, right? And that's exactly what happened. 
so I analyzed um, I, w I wanted to do like 20 but I got so bored it just became so obvious to me that it works I was just like screw it you know I'll just stick to 13 so I was able to guess correctly 77% of the time if I keep going it's probably gonna get to 80 right cuz um one sec I'll pull up our statistic yeah so you see in here there is like 84% score it's basically me playing Nasus and utilizing dodges to win games so you see I played three games I just wanted to test to see if my theory is still true of course it's true I won 100% of my games I played on a rule server these are my two accounts I had to dodge 18 times to win three games right but you can see that I have not been playing League of Legends for God knows how long right at least nine months at least right and I'm able to come in with no understanding of new macro no understanding of new items I'm able to look at the champion lobby and say we're gonna win or not and I have no skill like literally I have no idea I, I haven't CS in like God knows how long right and I'm still capable of winning 100% of my games right? which means that there is really 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 no skill in the game it just it's like a card game right so that's what I'm telling you you see you can you can like I'm gonna link this in the description below so you can have a look at the champions and you can literally analyze games the way I was doing it was um, I was basically looking at I would pick like a random guy I would roll a dice well 10 side dice I would pick a guy and okay and then I would analyze the score of the champions and then score of the position so you can see in here that okay based on my analysis uh, the bottom team should win boom they are victorious do you see because their champion score is higher because the champions they pick are OP right and the champions that these guys pick not so OP right and that's it and I was able to do it like I was I was like holy shit and some lobbies you look at them you you like holy shit like it's so obvious so obvious that they're going to win there was one in here where was it uh, one was Shaco ah screw it doesn't matter like it's just but I'm telling you you can test it yourself I'll link it in the description below just, just it's all about champions like fundamentally it's just it's it's really 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 is all about champions right okay so what does that mean that means if we already know the outcome of the game what's the point in spending 45 minutes playing it out if it's already predetermined like it's, it's just a complete waste of time you should be spending time dodging the games right <laughs> as opposed to playing it because the skill doesn't matter again if the skill matters I would not be able to predict this but I can and that tells you something right that means effectively speaking playing the game is synthetic because the outcome of the game is determined by champions not by how well you click your mouse do, do, do you understand like I hope you, that that resonates now also I noticed I spoke to some people because um, I originally wanted to do I wanted to spectate people uh, analyze their champions and then without knowing the outcome of the game try to predict whether the outcome of the game like who's going to win or not based on chat but I said to myself now it's a waste of time I don't want to sit through 45 minutes of the game I just gonna uh, randomly pick people from uh, like diamond tiers whatever some are platinum some are master whatever I, I found them on uh, I, found, I found these guys on uh, dual Q website and I just added them and I went through their some of their games and I was able to predict it like no problem right now they were asking me why did you add me and I said okay I want to I'm doing a scientific analysis and I want to see if it's all it's just a card game aesthetically and they got really really emotional some of them immediately kind of uh, uh, removed me from friends list or some of them got very defensive but you could feel emotional response that means I'm triggering something inside of them right 
and they fundamentally get very defensive that tells me they probably don't want to believe this because that means the whole thing is just a gigantic waste of time does that make sense because <laughs> fundamentally if the lobby decides the win and it's just a card game that 45 minutes after the lobby is just a illusion you're just like clicking buttons for no reason of course if you're gonna troll but i'm talking about if you're just like it's just it's it's all about the champion it's not really about the skill so that means the entire idea of having a rank is irrelevant because all that tells me is just on average you're just picking the right champs on average your team is better in here by champion score than the their their team and it's kind of like that do you know what I mean? So that means it's just like it's just a gigantic kind of bubble of people trying to pretend that it's not a card game, but it is at the same time. Like so, it's kind of like it's it's weird. But you could feel when you talk to them, you could feel that defensive reaction. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely onto something, right? So yeah, so I pretty much check market I can tell you straight away that yeah like I was able to do it, right so it's it is a card game fundamental right so the it's completely pointless to play it because you're just wasting your time right so this is my um I already showed it to you it's this one here okay what else league players pressed on the topic defensive I spoke about it yeah this one is huge. Okay, so why can you predict the outcome of the game um, without seeing how the player plays, right? Because people tell you, oh, no, 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 it's about the skill and champion master and all that shit. Okay, let me show you something. One sec. So I was doing a lot of simulations, like I was playing against bots, which is actually going to be a second part of the video uh, of this series, right? So... Look, these are intermediate bots. Look at the level of CC, crowd control. Nine second crowd control, and look at the damage they're dishing out. So, bots do not really have a lot of brains. They're just responding to shit. And they, I wouldn't say they're super skilled or they're like particularly good at positioning. The problem in League of Legends in MOBAs overall, I, I spoke about a bazillion times, is that crowd control is... It's like the idea of crowd control is stupid. It allows inferior players to prevent people from carrying. That's what I told you multiple times. You cannot carry in League of Legends because of crowd control. Now, the second thing about it, not only is there crowd control, the damage that is being done by crowd control is insane. Think about Brand. Not only does he stun you for two and a half seconds, he freaking does 3,000 damage, which is a percentage based, based on your health, right? It's insane damage. Normally you have either crowd control or damage, but in MOBAs you have both in the same um, champion sometimes, right? And it's, it's insane. Like, think about champions like Master Yi, uh, Jax, right? They're not, they cannot carry because they're gonna get blown up. That's it, right? So, think about like how can we predict the outcome of the game? So, one sec, let me. Well, it's not a super drawing, but I mean, think about okay, let's think about 2v2 fight. Vayne Saraka versus Misfortune Otilus. You already know the outcome, right? Because there is a limited amount of stuff that Vayne can do to avoid getting one shotted by Misfortune. What's gonna happen? Vayne is going to move around, right? So Vayne is going to be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what do I do to not getting one shot at? Now Tilos is going to press R, which is undodgeable ability. You cannot dodge this, right? She's going to get knocked up. Misfortune is going to press R, and she's going to die in 0.75 seconds because Misfortune on four items does 3,000 damage with her ult in blink of an eye, right? So... That means this lady is gone in 7.5 seconds. That means Soroka has to 1v2. And you know that's not gonna that's not gonna work. Right? So we can say that Misfortune Nautilus are for sure better champions than Vayne and Soroka. Because Vayne, okay, she does a lot of damage, but I mean the problem with Vayne is 
um, somebody sneezed and Vayne instantly killed, got, got, got killed basically, right? This is just too squishy. She get killed by um, Fiddlestick just ults and walks somewhere. He was targeting, I don't know, Fizz, but accidentally killed Vayne. <laughs> I played Vayne. I know what it's like. Right? And there is... I don't know, you can tell me, oh, oh, you know, Faker this, Faker that. Faker doesn't play Vayne, and there is a reason for that. Because he gets melted by everybody as well. Darius is gonna press Q and R, and you just die. That's it. Again, because there is limited amount of things. You cannot dodge damage in League of Legends. You cannot do it. Right? That's why you, I, I propose, like, if you want really games 1v5, play first-person shooters. You need to pick a game where you can dodge damage and your skill can compensate. Like, for example, in shooters, you can position yourself in such a way and you can sneak up on people and you can eliminate targets without taking damage. You cannot do it in League of Legends. Because look, I thought like these are bots. Bots. Brain dead bots. And I was trying to figure out, okay, if I'm Jax, my team is inting, right? Um, there's like, they kill two for four. They trade two for four. So roughly these bots represent human players. Uh, with three players left, left. So I'm Jax, I'm quite fed. Let me jump in, see if I can do anything. You just get blown up. That's it. That's all that's gonna happen. And you have to understand that these bots, some of them are fed, right? Zyra in here is pretty fed because uh, I'm gonna talk about this in part two. You can play with them. Um, these are intermediate bots and my bots are beginner bots. So my bots are feeders and I'm trying to carry them. So I'm trying to simulate loser skill and I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do you actually do this stuff, right? And there is a limited... Now, certain champions can do it, which is, we'll get to this in part two, but overall, most champions cannot. Because the game design just cannot... You cannot do it, right? Which means we can predict the outcome of games, and which I have already done, right? Now, people gonna tell you, I know the kids in the gonna be like ah oh, by tenacity okay let's look at the nine second cc seven second cc tenacity will give you 50 percent reduction right okay so as opposed to standing for seven seconds you'll be standing for 3.5 seconds fine but what are you gonna do against the damage right like how how do you escape the damage And there are like, well, you understand, like, there, there are slows. It's not like, because I tried, the, like, I'm Jackson here, right? I'm trying, like, lifesteal builds, I'm trying tank builds, I'm trying to figure out how do you actually do it. Um, some champs can do it, but Jax is not one of them. Just He's just not one of them. Um, you see, like, I'm trying damage with uh, lifesteal in here. He just doesn't lifesteal enough, and, like, he's just too squishy. Just gets killed instantly, basically. Master Yi has exactly the same problem. When you go into compositions like this, like Galio is just gonna knock you up and you're just gonna get blown up, basically, and that's it. Oh, yeah, but we'll we'll get to we'll get to that in part two. Yeah, so this is going to work up until probably Grandmaster, but if you analyze Grandmaster, I mean it's like 99.98% of the game, so you can safely say that 100% of, well, 99.9% .9 of games on League of Legends is just a card game, basically, right? Okay, yeah. So th this is, again, um, we're going to talk about engagement optimized matchmaking because if I can predict it, if I can predict it, right? Imagine what the algorithm can do. I mean, it's just so obvious they can do it, right? And I put in here poker bots, but... Why did I put poker bots in here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because some people, some people have a theory. They're saying, "Oh, I've been debating a streamer. It was like a girl. She got really, really emotional." I was like, "Yeah, but engagement optimized matchmaking predicts the outcome of the game already." And she was like, "Oh, yeah. Well, how does the engagement optimized matchmaking know that he's going to pick a Z? Like, how does he know that he's going to pick a shit champions?" Well. How does a poker bot know that you're probably bluffing? 
or how you're gonna bet because it can average out and with probably like 80 90 percent probability guess what you're going to do and that's probably most likely what you're going to do if that makes sense do you know what i mean because people are fundamentally creatures of habit and I mean, there, there, was, there was a dude who told me, I think, that if you put a tracker on a human over a year and track him year by year by year, you will notice on, like, if you put it on Google Map, that he will be like a fish, like, visiting similar locations at similar times of the day, <laughs> which was like, holy shit, is that really true? And I started observing, like, others and myself, and I noticed it's actually quite, quite close to being true. Like, people are definitely... That's because, you see, uh, change, people do not like change. They It stress, stresses the body. Like, like, for example, why is, like, when somebody passes away, somebody that you are being with for a long time, why is it so... Like, why do people go into such... Uh, why is it such extremely painful for the human? That's because the change and adaptation required to wipe away those 20 years of life is, like... The amount of adaptation requires just so stressful for the body. It just it's very hard to cope with it. That's just how human works, unfortunately. You know, but like that tells you that you can predict what they're gonna do, in to a certain degree, right? Okay. Another proposition I had. So we 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 can say that this proposition is correct. If it's a card game, I should be able to predict the outcome of games just by looking at the champions, and I have proven to you. That I can do it. You can also test it yourself. Okay, so next proposition was if it's a card game, then I should be able to beat higher skilled players who pick inferior champions in one on one scenarios, right? So, I mean, I hadn't played League in like one year and I still can 100% win with Trindamir over almost anything because Trindamir is overpowered on a ramp one on one, which tells me that there is no skill, it's all about the champion. Now, the reverse, it's just a reverse proposition that, you know, Katarina should not be able to beat a Trindamir, right? And generally, when I propose to people playing one-on-one, -on -one, I say, hey, just play one-on-one. -on -one. And they say, well, oh, it's boring. Why? Because I win all the time. Trindamir is just too overpowered. So they are just indicating that, you know, it's not really about skill. It's just about picking the right champion. Which, again, proves that it's a card game. Oh, yeah, and the final one is... My proposition, on, okay, if what I'm saying is true, that means over a long period of time, dodging is going to become a kind of like a pandemic in League of Legends. Smart people have figured out that, hey, you don't really have to get coaching. You can just dodge your way into like Grandmaster and Master Tier and just play OP champions, which is true because we know that I'm don't quote me on the dates but high elo players have been complaining for like past three years about oh everybody's dodging I can't play high elo it's like pe people are like why are you smurfing all the time because I can't play high elo everybody's dodging all the time because people in diamond master and grandmaster like low grandmaster are not really good they just dodge their way into it does that make sense? So people are like, oh yeah, I know this guy and he's like, you know, 70%, like 80% win rate and he played like, I don't know, 96 games. Yeah, but he dodged most of the time, <laughs> right? And it became a pandemic. It became a huge, huge, huge problem. And Riot had to introduce severe punishment for it. So we know that this is true. And we also know that this is true because I abuse it myself, right? I play OP champion, Nasus. And I just dodge, 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 I get a good lobby, I win. Dodge, 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 I get a good lobby, I win. And that's it. That's 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 the secret. Okay. So, I hope this is enough to convince you that, like, what I'm saying is true and accurate. So, so that this is like, this is like part one, right? I'm gonna do part two in the next video which is where I kind of create... Well, l l let me get into that video and then I, I talk about it in there. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.